invented this program to allow our alumni to either reach old global interests or have first time experiences. We recognize that during your nursing studies, it can be very difficult to pursue anything global and certainly anything of any great length because you've got very important studies to do becoming registered nurses and advanced practice nurses, et cetera. So we created this program matching alumni of Penn Nursing with very high quality organizations engaged in global work. And I am thrilled to be able to uh, introduce some of those fellows to you this evening who have participated in the past and they will uh, tell you their story. I'm going to call up their names just in the order I'm seeing them on the screen. So I'm gonna first invite Barbara Doyle to tell us about her experience. Okay, sure, thanks. So um, let me quick share my screen then. And there we go. Let me just go full screen. All righty. And hopefully that's working. All righty. So you can see from my background, I've, I've had a very varied career, healthcare related career. So I spent about 15 years in clinical practice, then transitioned into industry, worked as a product manager, and then most recently as a consultant. But relating to our, our talk here today was my time as a Peace Corps volunteer in Gabon, Africa in the early 90s. So as a healthcare you know, volunteer, um, I worked with three different villages to do education um, and spend some time volunteering. Well, you know, as a volunteer, but working with the OBGYN um, unit at the local hospital. We couldn't take jobs from the, you know, the nurses, but I could volunteer and help them there and spent a number of weeks at a, an American hospital. And so that, you know, experience had a huge influence on my professional career and my, just my personal life in general. And so when the opportunity came up to apply for the Penn Nursing Global Fellowship in late 2020, you know, I was still th thrilled at the idea of potentially being able to return to Africa, see part of it that I've never been. It was um, the the Global Nurse Executive Fellowship is based out of Rwanda. And so at the time, even though the, you know, the pandemic, we were in the midst of the pande pandemic, we were optimistic that we might be able to actually go on site either at the end of each phase or even at graduation at the end. That program is a 12 month program. You can see the we had 10 fellows from six countries. They're kind of behind me there um, participate. Um, but it was pandemic time, right? So it, I was a full time employee when I applied. And so I only had a limited number of hours that I could um, uh, work, you know, I could add to my work week. So we were creative and we we actually split the role into two different roles that Luca and I um, shared working towards our strengths. So Luca was also working full time. She was also in graduate school, I think maybe for her PhD. Um, so we looked at what we were good at and how we could best help the program. So Luca had a lot of strong um, clinical research experience. And so she took on the monitoring and evaluation, creating surveys, doing interviews, quantifying that data, you know, doing baseline assessments versus uh, in interim assessments and then post assessments. And then with my industry experience, I've done, you know, some publishing, I've done a, a lot of present, you know, presenting, I know quality improvement, I know product management, project management. I did an overview of the entire curriculum. So we were supporting cohort two. Um, I think Katie's going to talk to you about cohort three. Um, but we wanted to look at that curriculum and make sure that we, you know, ident identified areas for improvement and made those improvements. We updated, you know, all of the reading materials to be more relevant to the time frame, adjusted the assignments so that they were kind of even month to month and phase to phase, um, updated the grading rubrics um, to be more consistent across the different um, phases. And then based off of my experience, I was able to do additional support and mentorship um, that just evolved. So I facilitated monthly calls with the fellows based off of what, you know, um, what issues they were having at the time. So we had assigned a, a SWOT, you know, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, um, and threats assessment for the for staffing challenges. And they really struggled with completing that. So we did that one week. Another week, we talked about social determinants, of not week, month, social determinants of health. So it was very dynamic, but it was very 
very rewarding to do that. And at the very end, I was able to help them format their posters, um, their poster presentations for their graduation, you know, creating the visualizations and just, you know, easing that process through. So again, it was a great experience for me. And I, um, you'll hear from Katie as well. And I hope one of you gets to have this experience with Partners of Health in Health um, in the future. So thank you. Thank you uh, so much, Barbara. And I want to just say, because I'm already feeling intimidated myself, I want to assure everyone who's come this evening to that all kinds of skills are needed. And our job here at Penn Nursing is to match the skills of interested alumni with host organizations' needs. So Barbara has told you about one of our strongest collaborations, which is with Partners in Health. But we've had a number of others, and we have a number of pending opportunities in uh, Peru and India and other places, including the ongoing relationship with Partners in Health, very much thanks to the fabulous groundwork that Barbara in that first group laid. But uh, I'd like now to ask Allison to show herself and tell us about, she was our very first uh, Global Nursing Fellow. And uh, yeah. Hi, yes, yeah, sorry about that. Um, thank you so much for having me. Um, so yeah, I, for my background, um, I have actually been doing medical trips, um, more like surgical and medicine since I was a teenager to Central America. So I've always really been interested in global health. However, I'm also interested in mental health. Um, so I never really thought that I would be able to do combine the two. Um, but when I was at Penn for my um, undergrad and master's, they did have a trip to India and we looked at um, mental health and community health. So I was able to do that as a student. Then um, I was working as a psych NP in the United States and I saw an email from Nancy um, and Dr. Group who used to work um, in the global health office here um, asking for individuals who are interested in um, mental health in India. Um, so I just took a stab and uh, applied and was thankful to get it. So let me share my slides here, I think unless, let me see, I'm not seeing the slides as an option. It was at the bottom. Yes, um, it's not on my desktop, but now I uh -huh. see, I have two. Okay, so what I did there, I this was in 2018. So are you able to see my screen now? Yes, but you might want to do the uh, slideshow, go to slideshow. Yes. yes, I just wanted to make sure because I do oh, have yeah. two um, desktops, so I'm a little, um, and I don't know why it goes into presenter mode. Sorry about this. I'm not quite sure how to get it out of presenter mode. It's fine. Anyway. It's, it's pictures, so it's fine. Um, so this was in 2018 before the pandemic. I was able to go and stay there for three months. Um, so the Banyan is a mental health um, organization that's really grown and there are lots of different departments. Um, they primarily treat uh, women and children, um, which was um, a focus that I was really excited about. And they, they do, um, it sounds like they really expanded. But what I was able to combine also was education and curriculum development. Um, they hire community mental health workers. Um, in the past, they had been really trained and utilized as case managers, more from a social work perspective, um, as the founder of the Banyan is a social worker. But um, there was this Renfield um, gift being given to them, and it's from Penn Nursing, um, so they really felt like they could incorporate um, nursing education into the curriculum for these community mental health workers. Um, so because I did have a, you know, we all have a general background in nursing, obviously, um, before specializing, um, I was able to incorporate, um, I like to call it as like nursing 101 skills, 
um, taking vital signs, learning about the medications, um, but with a mental health spin. So they really wanted to learn how to incorporate both learn these skills, these hard skills, and why it was important for um, mental health care. Uh, so at, towards the end of my time there, um, we were able to do a train the trainer session so that you can see the individuals um, here, they're mostly women, um, were learning how to take a blood pressure, um, learning how to do a pulse, height and weight. Um, and it is for those who don't know, is related to mental health, especially with medications and their side effects. Um, so, and then this larger picture is just us after the end of the day. Um, I was very grateful my fellowship ended after three months, but I was able to return and we did more train the trainer sessions. Um, and they've really incorporated this into a curriculum. Um, these women live in the community and serve their community. Um, and it gives them a boost of confidence. Um, they don't necessarily have mental health problems themselves, but have close relationships with them. Um, and it's really um, come a long way. In the beginning, they used to, um, just for some context, they required their husband's permission, written permission to be able to take part in this program. And they earn a certificate at the end of the program. It's about like a year, um, but they've done away with that. Um, the women, have become in, more independent and they're able to sign up themselves and they don't require anyone's permission to take part. Um, so it's it was really great um, being part of that uh, work. Thank you, Allison. That's uh, super, it's one of my uh, favorite projects that uh, our fellows have completed. Well, I love them all, actually, I love them all. So uh, Stephanie, would you like to share your experience? Absolutely, and I will also share my screen. Okay. Uh, is everyone able to see it? Yes. Okay, great. So I'm Stephanie. I am a Penn Nursing alum from 2010. Um, I guess my, like many of you, have always had an interest in global health, but there haven't been so many opportunities that I would was able to engage in prior to becoming a nurse or while becoming a nurse once you get your career started. During um, my nursing program, I did the multicultural and global health minor, and I read Paul Farmer's book, Mountains Beyond Mountains, and that kind of just ignited that interest even more. And unfortunately, at Penn, at the time, you could only do um, a study abroad in England or Israel, which was at the time actually rescinded due to political issues. Um, but during your junior year, where you're doing your your most formative clinical rotations, it wasn't um, really something that I wanted to do because I wanted to learn how to be a nurse in the United States healthcare system. So once beginning my career, I, I worked at um, Memorial Sloan Kettering as an ICU nurse, and then I became an ICU nurse manager. And you kind of just, you get on that, that treadmill and it's hard to get off and like really dedicate time to your passions without um, veering off track in your professional goals. Um, but after managing an ICU during the pandemic in New York City and realizing that I was going to be moving across the country to California, this was actually like the perfect time for me to pursue some of my other passions. And everything came together kind of serendipitously. Uh, my family is actually from Peru. And after talking to Nancy, she told me um, that the program that they were recruiting for was actually, I think it was the Partners in Health program, but that there was something else in the works in Peru. And all of a sudden my eyes lit up and I said, oh my gosh, that would be perfect for me. Um, and so we waited and we like allowed the negotiations with the partnerships to happen. And finally it all came together in uh, Cusco, Peru at a cervical cancer clinic named Cervi Cusco who had several affiliations with other healthcare organizations in, in the city. So I was actually fortunate enough to be able to work with three organizations in Cusco, Servi Cusco being one of the main ones and, and really the organi organizer of all of the programs that I was involved in. So I did spend time observing and helping out at a cervical cancer clinic 
uh, in a city where there was higher rates of cervical cancer in women and, of course, taboos with women's health. Um, I was additionally able to help out at Esalude, one of the main hospitals in, in town, and work on an inpatient pediatric unit. And that was really more for my own education and experience. And then lastly, and probably most significantly for, for my time there, I worked at Ogar Asuwasi, which is an orphanage um, for, for children who have been um, either lost their parents or been abandoned. Um, and I was actually tasked with creating a medical record system for the children that live in this orphanage. Uh, and that actually um, became a bunch of other things because once you get there and you get to know how things work and what they're struggling with, uh, you ne don't necessarily need to stick to the original task at hand. Um, but you know, I did work with um, this gentleman down here on the left side of the screen by the powers of LinkedIn and social media. I found him. Uh, his name is Robert Down. He um, is on the board of Open EMR, which is an open source electronic medical record system. And I just kind of cold called him on LinkedIn and asked him if he would be willing to help me with the solution or the problem that I was trying to solve for. And Thankfully, he actually also has a passion for public health, and he helped me create an electronic medical record system through Open EMR pro bono, completely pro bono. Um, and so, once the, this was all kind of happening concurrently, but you know, I got to know the kids. I spent a lot of time hanging out with them at the orphanage. I realized that their nutrition is really poor. And part of that is because they don't have clean water. And it's like, what are they gonna do with an electronic medical record system if they don't even have clean water? And so I found a, a water filter, a water engineer, uh, the gentleman in the, on the right side of the screen. And he just had a heart of gold and he helped me um, pretty much install this water filtration system at the entrance to the to the orphanage that would filter all of the water coming into the showers, into the sinks, all the drinking water, um, because what was happening was the, the children were showering and drinking and water with parasites, and it was definitely um, affecting their nutritional status and their growth. And uh, you may not be able to tell, but a lot of these children are, are really short for their age, um, and that has to do with the parasites and the cleanliness of the water. So I was really happy to be able to do this. I can't confidently say that the filtration system has been maintained since I left, but that's one of the uh, typical uh, challenges of global health work that we need to solve for how to actually sustain the solutions that you put into place. Thank you, Stephanie. And uh... You, you said a couple of things that I think are important. Uh, one, well, all of it was important, but that particularly struck home for me. One is that Stephanie was amazingly persistent. She said this, but I don't know how well you heard it. When I had first recruited, and you can stop sharing this, the, sh the uh, slides, Stephanie. When I first met Stephanie, she'd responded to one of my general calls for, for fellows. And we were recruiting for partners in health at the time which she would, would have been a fine match for as well. But as she said, she was excited about the, when I heard about her background, her Spanish language skills and her connection even to Peru, I said, oh, well, you know, there's this other opportunity. And I think it was over maybe eight months time that we were in communication waiting for this to come to fruition. That combined with, I think what you've been to hear from, what you have heard and will hear from anyone engaged globally is flexibility, uh, going with the flow, which is actually helpful in all of our jobs, even in the United States. But a lot of times in global work, it's even more um, changeable. And the more flexible you are, the, the more you can help and the more you will really get out of things. Katie, would you like to wind up for us? Sure. Um, let me share. Um, 
Are you seeing my screen? No. Um, how about now? Not yet. Well, that's weird. Um, if not, I can probably find the slides if you need me to. Um, I don't know why it's, um, oh wait, how about now? No. Well, that's so strange because on my end, it looks like it's it's sharing. Um, Let me see if I can pull yours up, okay? Okay, sorry. I don't know what's. Oh, wait. Can you see them? Yeah. Yep. Uh, I may be in your notes section, but why did it not say? Anyway, I think it's good enough. Go ahead, Katie. <laughs> um, okay, so my name is Katie Buashiri. I am an um alum of the Penn Nursing uh, second degree BSN MSN program. I graduated from the BSN in 2006 and the MSN in 2008 with my family nurse practitioner degree. Um, I had actually done a, a different bachelor's in psychology and my master's in uh, global health prior to coming to Penn. So I kind of already had a little bit of an inkling that I wanted to have some involvement in global health in my career. And during the time I was at Penn, um, I had the opportunity to do a couple of global health related things. One was um, I went with a professor who was a mentor of mine uh, to Botswana for about three weeks. And we did a little research project um, looking at HIV medications and um, side effects, which at that time were still quite significant. Um, and then I also had an opportunity to work with Nancy all the way back then in a summertime fellowship they used to have. Um, and I spent the summer in Malawi one summer uh, working as essentially a, a research research assistant um, to a PhD student in demography who was doing a study of um, HIV and transmission on an island community in Malawi. So I'd had the opportunity to go to Africa a couple of times as a student. And then um, I left uh, Penn, I went on to be um, work clinically for a number of years um, in a variety of different places and positions, primary health, um, starting off, and then also moving into more specialized um, environments in orthopedic surgery, first in adults, and then ultimately in pediatric orthopedic surgery. And in that capacity, I had um, an opportunity at one point to spend about six months volunteering in Africa with an organization called Cure International, um, which is a, a group of hospitals in a few different countries in Africa that do um, specialty surgeries and other services. So I had volunteered as a nurse then, as well as done a number of, um, you know, just travel, traveling. Um, and then most recently, I lived in Qatar for three years and worked in a hospital as an NP in Doha prior to returning to the States in 2021. Um, and when I came back here in our early 2021, kind of mid pandemic, um, I came because I was starting a job at CHOP um, and I currently still do work part time at CHOP in the King of Prussia Hospital campus. Um, right now I'm working in the emergency department as a PEDS NP, but um, my full-time gig uh, right now is working remotely with Partners in Health, which came about as a result, direct result of my uh, experience in the Penn Global Nursing Fellowship. Um, and so essentially, as Barbara told you, the, the Global Nursing um, Fellowship partnership with Partners in Health as of right now, um, partners us with a program called the Global Nurse Executive Fellowship which is a program that Partners in Health has developed um, as an internal mechanism for sort of um, giving leadership uh, skills to their own uh, nurses employed at their various clinical sites. 
uh, which include five sites in Africa, as well as Haiti, Mexico, and Peru. So a total of eight clinical sites. And I had the opportunity to join um, PIH, uh, the GNF program as a global nursing fellow in August of 2022. I actually joined late. There was a different fellow who started the program before me. And she, after uh, the first couple of months, um, had a change in circumstance and decided to leave the fellowship. And so an opportunity opened up for a new fellow to come. And I was lucky enough to be selected for that position. So I actually joined the fellowship um, when they were about a third of the way done. So the, the fellowship is broken into three phases, the, the GNF fellowship, that is. Um, phase one, which is focused on leading self. Phase two, which is focused on leading others. And phase three, which is focused on leading systems. And at that time, um, I ended up joining right at the beginning of phase two. And the way they had organized the fellowship for that particular program we did have an opportunity to go on site uh, to Rwanda for the week long intensive. Um, each phase starts off with a week long intensive program. And um, we were able to do that for the phase two, which happened in, um, or sorry, actually we went in phase three uh, for the week long intensive, but I joined uh, for the virtual week long intensive two in August of 22. And then for the final week-long intensive, which took place at the end of January of 23, um, I was able to go uh, on site in Rwanda and spend the last um, intensive week together with the fellows. Since um, Barbara's year had been entirely virtual, and in fact, there had been another cohort prior to Barbara's year when they very first started the program that was also pretty much virtual um, with some time together. I, um, in Boston, this was the first time that all of the fellows from our cohort, as well as the alumni from the previous cohorts, were invited to be together on site um, all at the same time. So this picture is a picture of myself um, and Allison. You'll notice Allison, who served as the faculty mentor after being um, her own fellow earlier on. She came back to be the faculty mentor for my year. Um, this is in Rwanda in Butaro, and these are some of the cohort three fellows as well as some of the alumni from the previous cohorts um, uh, too. So I did a lot of the same work that Barbara did. I did a lot of curriculum support um, and grading. So part of the program is the fellows engage in a learning management system um, program between intensive weeks where they are doing weekly assignments and the, the penultimate um, project of the uh, GNF is that they do a capstone QI project at their clinical site. And so a lot of the program is focused around mentoring them through that capstone um, and, and, and helping them um, write it up at the end of the, of the fellowship and do a big project, uh, poster presentation. So this um, particular experience, we got to go to Rwanda we did all kinds of site visits. We spent some time in Chigali. We spent some time in a small town called Kirehe and another small town called Ringwavu. And then we spent a few days in Butaro, which is the site of the University of Global Health Equity, if any of you are familiar with that institution, which is the university that was sort of um, Dr. Paul Farmer's vision. Um, and so in Butaro, we have the university campus as well as um, a big hospital site, a clinical site there too. Um, and the University of Global Health Equity ha now has a medical school. It also has a global health, a global public health uh, master's program. And most recently this fall, they're, they're starting um, a, a, a global health leadership and nursing program. Um, and they are working on bringing a clinical nursing program to UGHE which is hopefully gonna take the form of a family nurse practitioner program. Um, and there are other universities in Rwanda that offer the BSN. So I think the vision is that UGHE is going to hopefully one day have a, a clinical master's. Um, so- Katie, I'm gonna briefly really, really stop you right yeah. now. <laughs> I had asked, all the, I, you can hear how enthusiastic Katie is and she's working with partners in health now. So she's really 
deep in the weeds of this program. And I'm I'm putting on, I'm projecting my own reaction to all of our speakers and saying, wow, this is a lot of detail, a lot of places. And I want to leave time uh, for folks to be able to um, answer, well, for our audience to be able to ask questions later. And now what have I done here? Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I am anymore. Okay. So um, apologies, Katie, but we had asked all of our fellows to limit themselves to three or four minutes. And I, I've been loose with that. Uh, but I, I want to, I have a few questions to ask all of the, to ask the fellows, but they don't all have to answer these. Okay. So whoever feels most excited about the question, go ahead and, and step in. And we may take one or two answers for each question, but, um, well, the first one is sort of the same question I have for everybody who's attending today. Uh, what attracted you to this? Why? I mean, Barbara sort of hinted at it that she'd had a long global past. You've all kind of hinted at your past, your global past. But is there anything special about the way this was set up, a global nursing fellowship connected to your alma mater? Is there may, maybe not? But is there any anything different from pursuing a different kind of global experience? We can take this one. Thanks. Yeah. For me personally, um, I think the fact that the program provided uh, a mentor or advisor through the Penn Nursing School was a huge advantage for me, uh, you know, being that I, I spent my entire career in inpatient, in oncology in the United States. I didn't have a whole lot of global health experience going into this. Um, that gave me a lot of comfort that, you know, I would have someone to bounce ideas off someone who had a lot more tons of experience in the fields of global health and and behavioral economics uh, my mentor Dr. Butenheim uh, that was huge for me and I, I felt a lot more at ease going into it and feel like I was going to be able to have higher chances of actually implementing what what we wanted to implement great Stephanie anybody else want to answer that question If not, I'll move on to, let's see. Well, what type of alum from Penn Nursing do you think is the right fit for this program? I'll start on that one and pardon my cat. He's joined the call. Um, but I think any kind of alum, right? Cause I'm an odd alum, you know, I, I'm not in clinical practice right now. I hadn't been in clinical practice for 20 years and yet, this opportunity presented itself and um, I had the passion for it and, and was able to learn more about it and understand that the skill sets I could bring to the table were, were valuable and, and um, needed. Right. So I think anyone who has of interest in it and has passion for it, you know, regardless of background would, should, you know, should look into it and should apply. That's my thought anyway. Thank you, Barbara. Anyone else on this question? Yeah, I can add to that. Um, I would say the biggest key is, um, you know, flexibility and willingness to be, you know, open to to doing a, a variety of different things. I think particularly with the PIH fellowship, there's kind of any number of ways that you can um, get involved and support the program. And, you know, um, they kind of had it uh, set up in sort of two different tracks, you know, there was room for monitoring and evaluation support, which as Barbara was stating, her, her cohort partner, Luca kind of took over that bit. And then um, there was more of the curriculum and grading support of the fellows work, um, which is what um, I and Allison ended up doing more of. Um, PIH actually has now um, hired a full-time ME specialist. So we have less need for that in the in the UPenn fellows, although there's certainly opportunity for people to be involved in that kind of work. But I would say an openness and willingness to, to support um, programs in various different ways, and then also be flexible, dive in, be a part of, you know, meetings, team meetings and, and things like that. I think one of the struggles I had in my year was, was the fact that I had joined late. So it was, I had to kind of do some catch up work to try to integrate myself into the team and also get to know the fellows um, for that cohort and um, their projects. 
So I would say, you know, anything you can do to make yourself open and available and um, willing to participate in a variety of different activities. Thanks, Katie. And again, a tribute to you, despite your late arrival. So you integrated yourself so well that you actually eventually got hired by Partners in Health. So it's kind of interesting. Uh, so Allison, since you haven't had a chance, I'm going to give the last question to you, and you're probably the best equipped to respond to this one. And that is, what was most challenging and most rewarding about the experience? And you're muted for now. Thank you. I knew I was going to do it, but I did it anyway. <laughs> um, okay, so I had been to India previously with Penn. Um, so I did, was exposed to that culture and, you know, we um, read our history and whatnot during our class. Um, but this time I was the only one there. I, I did, my mentor um, was there for a week, um, but then she went to Penn and we had our weekly meetings. Um, but I was, you know, the only foreigner, outsider, essentially anywhere, where wherever I went. Um, I think another challenge too was that it was uh, rural mental health. Um, so it was, it was really gracious of them. They put me up in a board member's, um, I guess, vacation home, but it was a little isolating at times. And I think a lot of the individuals, um, the people that work there and other professors, they were trying to give me space, but you know, you're there for three months and you're like, no, I want to communicate and collaborate and, you know, even in off time, um, spend some quality time with them. I did eventually, you know, um, make lasting friendships and I still keep in touch with them, but, um, that took a little bit of time. Um, I guess another challenging piece is knowing exactly what they want from this. Um, so the first, I would say even month was going around and interviewing all these different individuals that were part of the program and trying to, you know, meet their needs and exactly what they, they wanted, um, from the so that took a little bit of time to gather, but I, I think it turned out pretty well. Um, I think there was a second part to your question, Nancy, if, but I- Most I've, rewarding, most rewarding. Oh, most rewarding. Um, yes, and I should say as an aside for the challenges is I didn't know the language at all. I, I know more of the romance languages, so that was very difficult for me. Um, most individuals spoke English, uh, although the community mental health workers um, did not. And I feel terrible that they're bilingual and I was not. But anyway, so that was a challenge. But it was so rewarding um, on the train, the trainer days um, to see their confidence. Um, there was this sort of deference, especially in the beginning towards me. Again, I think that's the outsider piece, but they would break, you know, you're just there all the time and they would be comfortable and laugh and communicate more. So that was I, I loved that, um, seeing all, all the women become themselves and more confident um, in practicing all these skills and everything. So I would say that. Fabulous. This, this was great. Uh, I want to open things up to uh, anyone brave enough to, well, they don't have to show their camera, but if you if you did um, show us yourselves, that'd be great too. But you, with or without your camera, if you have any questions, um, please Please feel free to ask all of our wonderful fellows what anything that's on your mind. We'll start with Hannah in a second. And I want to let you all know that um, when we're done with our discussion, I will put some information in chat where you'll be able to find open fellowship opportunities now. But I want to remind you that people like Stephanie, we work in conversation for maybe almost a year before we actually did this. So if you have the least bit of interest let us know because we can have ongoing relationships as, as opportunities present themselves. And I also want to let you know that both Stephanie and Allison, who spent time in country, each had three month commitments, but um, Barbara and Katie have had like one close to one year uh, commitments, more or less. Our fellowship program is designed to be a minimum of three months 
because that's when, we, as, as Allison was saying, it took a month for certain things to happen. And for Stephanie, well, she was making things happening every second, but <laughs> the longer you stay, the more impact you're going to be able to have. And Barbara, who was a Peace Corps volunteer before all of this other life of hers, um, as I was, we know that two years in country or one to two years in country, even that is not enough. Uh, but our, our fellowship program is designed to be between three months and a year. Hannah, take it away. Hi, thank you all for speaking to us today. So I'm currently a part of the ABSN cohort that's graduating in December. Um, so I was just wondering how many years of clinical experience or how many years as a nurse or as an NP would you suggest before we apply? Or like, is there any, is there like a, any time that's too soon to start talking about this, I guess? I, well, I want to start by answering that because I know that our ABSN second degree programs and now our new masters of professional nursing students are often have a very big backgrounds before they ever start the second degree program. As I think Katie was that kind of person and probably, you know, that's the second degree students often have had another life who, and if, if you listen to Barbara and the different skills that she brought to this experience, these have not been all clinical skills. And now Katie is using very much her administrative skills on top of her and, and others are using pedagogical skills. That was an important part of what Allison was doing. So uh, it's, so Hannah, if you've got skills that match an organization's asks, and the asks are, we try to sort of put them on the website, that's what I was alluding to later, then it's not never too soon. And anyone else have a comment about that? I'll, I'll speak to that. I think it's also like a very personal um, decision. It really depends on, on your what's on your plate, you know, what's going on in your family life? How are your finances? Do you have lots of, you know, loans to pay off? When when I graduated from nursing, I would have loved to do the Peace Corps, but I, I couldn't. I had to start working. And then I started working at an organization that I didn't want to leave. And so I couldn't really take more than two weeks off at a time. And so I had to wait until I left that organization to have this like expansive period of time where I could really like dive in deep. Um, and to me, it was worth the wait. Super. Uh, Rabina, because we see your camera, did you have a question or comment? Um, first of all, thank you for having this because I didn't even know that, you know, I mean, we talk about diversity so much and uh, I didn't know this existed because I'm from Nepal and uh, I've always been interested in global health and uh, you know, the need of it in, uh, every time I go back home. And uh, so right now I'm in a psychiatric mental health pro uh, nurse practitioner program and I'll graduate next year, uh, July 2025. And I'm part of a Lauder Fellow too. So, you know, and, um, but every time, you know, like I have tried to do a lot of these projects on my own, uh, and didn't have any support. So uh, I had tried the Fulbright, you know, and uh, it just, there were a lot of, uh, I've done it and I know there is so much need. And, uh, you know, so I just, I just want to have like, come meet one of you that have experience with it, you know, how I can connect this program. And, you know, I mean, I'm just, this is where my heart is, you know, and mental health, especially because last time when I was there, I visited a lot of village. I connected with the provider. I mean, the whole point of me coming to become a psychiatric nurse practitioner was to somehow the end goal is this for me, you know? So, um, so yeah, that's, that's where I am. And I just, my question is, you know, how I can, how I can make that happen really. So, Rabina, I know that Allison is dying to answer this question for you, being uh, a lead in our mental health uh, education program and also trying to push me to find a fellow to work with the organization that she worked with in the past. So, Allison? 
Yes. Um, Ravina had already emailed me and I was like, we need to set up aside a time to talk um, offline. So we'll still do that. Um, I was going to refer you to Nancy. I'm sorry. That's part of my question to, um, to see, because I know that we, there were some relationships with individuals in Nepal. I don't know if you know of any organizations yourself. I mean, maybe that's um, reaching out if you wanted to go specifically to Nepal, because um, we do have contacts in India who are, are hoping um, for some more individuals. And I'd really love to support someone to go back there. But if um, like Stephanie, you know, was waiting around, not waiting, but um, I guess waited for the right opportunity for Peru instead of partners in health. Uh, maybe there's something that we can do and make contact and um, then find a way to support you in that regard. Well, also, I would say that, again, in the spirit of flexibility and, and global health, I would hope or imagine that although Rabina's heart is very much in her home country, that engaging in this way, even in another country, is there's a skill set to acquire um, and that so there is still value and transferability and i know south asia is a big 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 region but <laughs> i'm guessing some of the people who one would work with through the banyan and bomb and the fact that those are scholars that have tried to in fact they they got allison involved in sri lanka somehow at some point so i think that Again, it would be for any of the individual here who's interested in working with an organization, you would never get placed blindly. You would meet with folks from the organization. You talk about your own goals and they would talk about their needs and hopefully we make a happy match. But we never want to push an organization to accept a fellow that's not a good match for them. And we don't want a fellow to go someplace that doesn't feel right for them. So... Um, of course, what Allison's saying is that if anyone here knows of a fabulous organization for us to partner with, there is also a mechanism for host potential host organizations to reach out to us and ask for one of our fabulous alumni fellows. So that's an open invitation. And again, it's not just in this moment in time, Rabina and everyone else here. We are growing this program and we want to have long-term relationships with our alumni and and we are so proud to have you out in the world because you do us you do us proud wherever you go. Um, are there any other exciting questions or follow up? Hello. Oh, okay, Itunu, and then we'll go back to Rabina again. Yes. Um, so this is really great. Uh, I am in the um, MPN program, so I'm long away from alumni, but I do have a passion for global health. I had the opportunity to study abroad in India. Uh, so Allison, some of the challenges I was nodding my head. I was like, yeah. <laughs> um, but just being Nigerian as well, um, you know, there's like outside of the United States, I feel like there's so many like ways to like impact um, like mental health and like try to change the stigma. So I do have a passion for that as well. My question is, and this can go to anybody, like, were you, like, were you open to, like, where to go and what type of program it was? Like, what, like, what was your, like, thought process for, like, each program? Like, what made you apply? Like, were you, did you say, oh, I don't want to go here, but I want to go here? Or was it more opportunity driven? Like, how did you pick? Yeah, I'll start. Um, it was opportunity driven for me. Uh, period like just the because the application as it came through it was specifically for work in Rwanda so I guess it was both but th the other thing I wanted to say is in my work as a Peace Corps volunteer back in my 20s it um I just wanted to do the work right and so ultimately Peace Corps came back with three different countries and I was lucky enough actually two um because I wanted to go to the South Pacific and that wasn't an option and they offered Paraguay and Gabon and I picked Gabon because there was a beach which is but what, what someone does when they're 24. But um, <laughs> so, I, you know, it, it, it's the passion for the work. For me, anyways, the passion for the work more so than the location. And I'm sure that, you know, the other fellows have a, a could, so, could add to that. I'm too. not a fellow, but but I'm in this global health sphere. And I want to say, since I was also a Peace Corps volunteer, 
before Barbara, I mean, because I'm older. Uh, and back in the day, they would send us stacks of paper with all the opportunities for the Peace Corps. And I didn't make my decision based on this, that trivial pursuit of a beach, Barbara. <laughs> but I was someone who loved foreign languages and I was already a strong French speaker. So I was trying to pick a country where they required a French level already and that I might get to learn another language. So mm -hmm. I went to Chad and I learned some local Arabic. So just, just so we, I think it's sort of what Stephanie was saying earlier, we all come to these spaces for different reasons and in different ways and what we're trying to accomplish or contribute uh, can vary a lot. Um, but I wanna get back to uh, Rabina because she had a follow-up question before, I think. Thank you, Nancy. Um, yeah, what I just wanted to say that it's, uh, even though, yes, the Nepal is in the heart, you know, the, my Fulbright that I applied for was the, when, you know, this, uh, the study that I wanted to do was, because we, you know, India and Nepal is such a joint family dynamics. And uh, when, uh, like with the new generations and what happens to the elderly in, uh, in India, actually, it was my project uh, was in India. So, you know, I'm fluent in Hindi and the I have the cultural basis, like, you know, I speak, I mean, I speak uh, and I learn English. Uh, so it's, it, I'm, I'm open to, you know, it's, it's not about this country or that, but I think there is a big need for just connecting and, you know, taking the, what we have uh, here. Right now, I'm in actually Southeast Asian program and at a Hall Mercer for uh, uh, psycho, you know, my mental health so uh yeah you know i'm just open i just need the guidance <laughs> so. well we hopefully we will be able to give it to you and allison can serve as a mentor a second time around but um audrey did you have a question you had um un unmuted for a moment sorry about that um I did not, but I just want to say thank you guys so much for sharing. Um, this has been um, wonderful to hear. And I have also been interested in partners in health for a while. So it's cool to hear from um, some of the participants who are able to work with them. Um, obviously, I think they're doing great work. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Audrey. And I, I do hope folks will stay in touch. I want to show you before we we um, sign off, I'm putting a link in chat and I'm gonna also pull it up for you to take a quick look just so it'll look familiar to you when you wanna uh, explore a little bit. Um, so this is our uh, Penn Global Nursing Fellowship page and we describe what the program is all about we talk about our current opportunities, which include this mental health work in India. And all of this takes negotiation. It's not like turnkey, like, okay, today you tell me you're interested. I keep partners in health up here. They're not recruiting right this minute, but we've had a history now of three years. And so I know we will be recruiting in the future, I hope. Um, so, and serving Cusco where uh, Stephanie had served. So, Everyone who has been connected with the program, we have ongoing opportunities, and then we have new opportunities, like this one in Guatemala, where we have, uh, through other programs at Penn, we have a number of uh, people who have been associated with this hospitalito in Atitlan. So that, that link is, again, in chat. And then you can also go down and see, let's say, learn about the fellowship experience. If you come to that page, you there's Allison's photo from India. And you will, if you wish, you can learn again about our fellows. Uh, you can study them some more from what you've already heard. And I'll stop sharing now. And I hope that you all will reach out to Maddie or me. I, I let me just uh, also put, it's all over the website, but um, and also, when you look at that opportunities page, on each opportunity, we say how to get in touch with us. So feel free to, even if this is just something you say, well, maybe in three years, I could do this. Three years, three months, three weeks. We won't be able to accommodate three weeks. Uh, but we would love to 
stay in touch with you and have you feel free to ask any question. And Rabina, I hope we can find this right match because I'm feeling this passion from you. And I hope we can do something with you for you in the near future or in any future you wish at the time you want. Maddie, do you have any uh, closing remarks? No, I just want to thank all of our uh, alums who have joined us and shared about their experiences. It was amazing. You've all inspired me, even though I'm not a nurse, but I just want to get out and travel the world. Um, but as Nancy shared, a lot of these resources are available. I'll be sending a follow-up email tomorrow, so we'll include those links, Nancy's email, and all of those necessary resources. So you can always reach out to me or to Nancy, and we can direct you to the right person. But again, I just want to thank you all so much for joining us tonight. And again, super, super big thanks to our former fellows and to everyone who attended and to Maddie for making this happen. And hey, we are finished right on time at seven o'clock. How about that? Thank you all. Thank Bye -bye. you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. So Thank you.